For more information on our top stories and others, please visit our website at channelstv.com. YouTube.com forward slash channels web has videos of our shows. And staying with the spirit of Christmas, President Muhammad Buhari is using this occasion to reiterate his administration's commitment to fixing the country's infrastructure. The president was speaking when the Federal Capital Territory Minister, Mohammed Bello, led residents of the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja, to pay him a Christmas homage. The delegation is made up of politicians, traditional rulers and religious leaders as well. Our correspondent Ibrahim Adra reports. <laughs> It was an afternoon punctuated by bouts of laughter. <laughs> Most of them, reactions to President Buhari's jokes. The guests, led by the minister of the FCT, are residents of the nation's capital, paying the traditional Christmas homage. We are here today to pay you a Christmas homage. President Buhari welcomes his guests, expressing appreciation to Nigerians. I thank Nigerians very much from the bottom of my heart, very sincerely. Because you are our eyes and ears. So we have to listen to you. And I hope you are encouraging our constituencies that uh, this leadership is concerned with them. He reaffirmed his commitment to his oath of office, promising judicious use of resources. This leadership sincerely believed that if you get the infrastructure right, most Nigerians will mind their own businesses. They may not even care who is in government. And we hope that history will be kind to us. We will do our best to make sure resources continue to be utilized responsibly. And then, more humor. Uh, I'm being called Baba Goes Low. <laughs> Very unfair. When I came in uniform, I was in a hurry. You know what I did. But you know how I ended up. I too was locked up. <laughs> <laughs> there were cards for the president. and opportunities for a handshake with guests. A former senator and Buhari's minister believe the administration has done well. We are excited to work with him. We've seen the patience, we've seen his fatherly disposition, and we've seen the love for the country. He takes decisions not based on pecuniary interests, but based on the, the need to cleanse the system. The homage is the only known official engagement of the president today. From the presidential villa, Ibrahim Adra, Channels Television News. We're now being joined on the news at 10 by Reverend Shukbo Ayokunle, the president of the Christian Association of Nigeria, to throw more light on the celebration of Christmas uh, today. Many thanks indeed for coming on the news at 10. Now, uh, cr Christmas is celebrated every year, that's a given, but uh, what would you say is the significant aspect of the celebrations for this year? Well, the, the significance of Christmas is are very many. Number one, it is the demonstration of God's love for humankind that he created and who got lost in the garden through disobedience. But God, uh, in his business of restoring man into relationship with him, had decided to send his only begotten son to rescue us from the clutches of Satan and bring us back to the creator through Jesus Christ, a reconciliatory effort through his coming, which is the beginning of the process of redemption for humankind. Number two, Christmas is a demonstration of sacrifice. For Jesus to come, he had to become, made himself of no reputation. Being co-equal with God, he, he counted that not at this time when it was the wish of the Father to make him to be like us, putting on human flesh in order to redeem human beings. So he made himself of no reputation. He humiliated himself in theology. That is what we call self-humiliation. To become human beings, 
walk in the street, be limited like us, be insulted, etc., etc. That was the height of love. So Christmas is about the love of God. It's about the sacrifice of God and of the Son for us who got lost through uh, disobedience. We so the, 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 love, the love and sacrifice that you've just uh, itemized, how much of that are we exhibiting individually as a, as a country upon ourselves? Well, this is we are Nigerians. Though we profess religion, we don't need to come into terms with the profession and the practice. In practice, we need to show more love for one another by being our brother's keeper. Not only just occupying position for the sake of self-aggrandizement, but for service to humanity. When you love another person, you will cater for his good. You will struggle to even deny yourself of many of your rights in order to make sure that life is good for another person. So all these forms of uh, acts of corruption, selfishness that we see everywhere, we have to forsake in order to reflect mm. the properly the message of love, which is in Christmas. So uh, I wonder how you would respond to this one because um, a lot of people think that, uh, for instance, say that uh, whenever there is a crisis situation, um, people like yourself, clergymen, the office of the camp president, which you occupy now, uh, would often be called in to step in to, you know, to douse those kinds of tensions that we see. While some argue that that is uh, what should be, others say that that is meddling with politics. How do you view that? Uh, you know that opinions differ. The way people listen differ from one person to another. But in, 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 in reality, the work of the Christian clergyman, number one, is peace building. Peace building uh, between man and man and between community and community. And peace building in this nation itself in generality. That is part of our work, but our work is not limited to that. Part of our work is also to speak to powers, to what is right. It is not meddling with politics. It is about being the voice of the voiceless. It's about all the people in authority, whether Christian or Muslim, they are our children in the Lord. They are under our leadership, spiritual leadership in the churches. So as fathers to the nation, it is our right, without fear or favor, to speak straight to them to do what is right. It's not meddling with politics. If you have your son in politics and you don't call your son to order, your son will spoil your family name. Mm. So it is our responsibility to speak to the situation in the nation. It's not about meddling with politics. The people should also not forget that we are part of the society over which pe these people rule. So if we don't speak to wrong political steps, there'll be chaos. Then there will be problem on us also. <laughs> it will affect the church. You know, uh, we we could go on and on and have a very long, lengthy discussion yep. about this. But let me ask you something just off the cuff, and that has to do with uh, your views on. Uh, the release of the former NSA, Sambo Dasuki, as well as uh, the Revolution Now um, uh, organizer, Omoyele Shore, who was just released by the government. What are your thoughts on, along that line? It gladdens the heart. It also adds it more credibility to the government. But they ought not have to have spent that long time in detention in the first instance. Immediately, the court ruled that ruling ought to be obeyed. Because one of the tenets of democracy, which makes it work, is obedience to the rule of law. All courts, injunctions, directives, judgments, must be obeyed, whoever you are. Otherwise, there will be a state of anomie, which is called a state of normlessness, 
a state of disorder where everybody does, does whatever he likes. Are we, are we in that kind of state now when you consider that these two releases that happened just yesterday and also the call for others who are we, still politically detained or perceived as being detained politically? Well, are we, we, are not the in the state, we are not in the state of normlessness yet because not all court orders are disobeyed. But we are saying, we are crying out so that we will not get into that state. It is a happy development, welcome development, that these two have been released. But let others be released as well. Let government get very erudite lawyers that can argue their cases for them against whoever they have cases so that those people might be brought to judgment. But if we want people to be brought to judgment at our own time. Confirmed the attack during a political meeting in Uba on Christmas Day. According to the governor, it is unfortunate that Boko Haram insurgents attacked Kwara Gilim village of Chibok local government area, where six people were killed and three injured. The Boronosti Commissioner for Poverty Alleviation, Nuhu Clark, says all three injured persons are responding to treatment at the Chibok General Hospital or Chibok, came into national prominence when over 200 girls were abducted in the early days of the insurgency from the government secondary school Chibok in 2014. And it's a similar story in Kebi State, where at least two people have been killed and hundreds of villagers displaced after gunmen suspected to be cattle rustlers attacked nine villages in Wasugu Danko local government area of the state. The suspected bandits reportedly invaded the remotely located villages sharing boundaries with neighboring Zamfara State on Tuesday night and opened fire on the residents, carting away their livestock money and other valuables. According to eyewitness accounts, the affected villages are Shengel, Duru, Wadako, Kawo, Auda, Dadinkoa, Mashigi, Zagai and Yarkuka. Confirming the incident, the spokesman of Kebi State Police Command, DSP Nafiu Abubakar, explained that the bandits invaded the communities from Zamfara State and rustled many cows shot two persons and disappeared into the forest before the arrival of security operatives.